Christmas presents are exciting. Do you remember what you'd say is the best gift you've ever received at Christmas? I asked my kids this question, and here's what they said. My six-year-old loved her little talky doll that could talk, blink, and not much else. It cost a whopping $110 after tax, and it lasted for a solid eight months before it found its way to the back of her closet. My nine-year-old said his favorite was the popular fantasy book series. Six books in all, each getting progressively longer. The set cost $58 and lasted eight weeks before it lived its final dust-filled existence on a shelf. Now my tween loved the Brainy Putty collection. It cost $32 and lasted a measly eight days before it went to live in our carpet. Finally, my teenage son wanted the ultimate drone with a 4K camera. It cost the most and lasted the shortest amount of time. I'd like to say it lasted eight minutes, but no, it was eight seconds, which is only impressive in bull riding. As exciting as those gifts are, what if there was a gift at Christmas that was far better? In fact, so much better that it makes these look like, well, toys. What if this gift was worth so much that no one could buy it for you, nor could you afford it? What if it was something of extreme value, like, say, life itself? And what if this gift was given through the birth of a baby who became our paid in full? That's the gift offered to all. It costs us nothing, him everything. It lasts just a bit longer than eight seconds, eight days, eight weeks, or even eight months. It lasts forever. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. Tonight we gather on the eve of Christ's birth, joining together, living into the story of Christmas. And wherever you're at, let's join together worshipping our God. Let's open the service in prayer. Let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts and desires are known, we come before you tonight in worship, praising you for what you did more than 2,000 years ago. Be with us by your Holy Spirit, that we might again be filled with the joy of knowing you and remembering all you have done for us. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing praises to God. Let's uh, stand and sing. Thank you, Mrs. Some lovely carols to start this evening off. Our little town of Bethlehem.
that Christ is name, that he came so that God could be with us. Let's sing this next one, Angels We Have Heard On. Spirit will come upon you, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Thank you, Teresa. But let's continue singing praises to God. It's saying we three kings. Please stand. Thank you. 
hearts at all because that's what we're doing tonight. We're coming to worship and adore that holy man. issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Cornelius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his hometown to register. So Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what, the, concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things they had heard and seen, which was just as they had been told. Amen. And may God bless us reading to his word. Amen. Thank you, David. We've sung about the dramatic entrance of Jesus into the world. 
we have had the scriptures of the story read to us. Let's engage with the story in a third way, a visual way. see out of wedlock the census long distance to travel a husband who didn't organize a place to stay giving birth grubby shepherds coming to visit when you really think about the journey to that first Christmas it was pretty messy we have a tendency to romanticize the story of Christmas let's consider the events of that journey to the first Christmas. An angel appears to Mary. Now at Christmas in churches all across the country, children get dressed up as angels in Christmas productions. Some people send Christmas cards with cute little angels on them. And generally, Christmas angels are seen as beautiful glowing white cherubs singing glory to God. And perhaps that's okay, because that kind of is what happened at that first Christmas. However, consider that many times when angels appeared prior to Christ's arrival, the angel brought judgment on the people. It was challenging people to change their immoral ways. So this angel visiting Mary should be understood as a bit jarring in the lead-up to the first Christmas. Now, Gabriel doesn't bring a judgment, but a message of the coming Christ. But like other times angels have turned up, this message is one that brings challenges for Mary and for Joseph. Mary gets pregnant in a mysterious way, a holy way out of wedlock. Not such a big thing today. But at that time, Mary could have been stoned to death for being in that situation. Now socially, uh, everyone would have instantly thought Mary had either been unfaithful to her fiancé or her and Joseph had been jumping the gun. Either way, it wasn't a good look it would have led to public ridicule and isolation for both of them. Then we have the census that means that Mary and Joseph will have to travel while Mary is pregnant. And traveling at that time was neither safe nor easy. And with Mary being pregnant, this increased both her and Joseph's vulnerability to thieves. Not to mention that traveling while pregnant would not have been easy for Mary. 
challenging trip, to say the least. At the end of Mary and Joseph, at the end of their traveling, Mary and Joseph can't, can't find a place to stay. And again, we romanticize that. But consider the pure anxiety and perhaps the sheer terror Mary and Joseph would have had as each place they tried to get accommodation had signs of no vacancy flashing over the door. Any woman who has had a child will know it's scary enough being pregnant, let alone the, uh, going on a massive journey to find that there is no place to give birth. And then there's the birth. Again, any birth is a scary experience, but consider bringing a child into the world in a stable. These days, you can have a pool in your home, in your lounge, with a midwife beside you, or go to a birthing unit, or give birth in a hospital. There was none of that for Mary. Not to mention no pain relief, no epidural, would be available for her. And there's no option of caesarean should things not go well. <laughs> if you think that childbirth now is a miracle, imagine what it was like back then. It's challenging is an understatement. Then on top of all the challenges Mary and Joseph had, there was this quite unusual thing that when shepherds arrived. Now when we think of shepherds, we might have in mind someone like Barry Crump, or the How to Dad guy, Jordan Watson. The shepherds of that time would not have been anywhere near as clean and tidy as either of them. Imagine giving birth and into your maternity room comes three or more rough and smelly looking men who want to see your baby. What would that be like? See, this all highlights again that the journey to the first Christmas is a bit messy. And realizing that it was a messy journey to that first Christmas, I think, helps us. Because life is messy. Because perhaps far more than any other, this year has been messy. So we're probably... One or two people who predicted that 2020 would be a bit different in January. But I don't think anybody knew the mess this year would be. COVID. Lockdown. The financial ch challenges. The ongoing fear we are living in. Handshakes were out. Working from home is, was in. Bubbles was given a new meaning. Don't even think about coughing. In April, Easter services were cancelled. Though many of us did them online at home, it really wasn't the same. Right up till this night, I wondered, are we going to make it? Are we going to make it to Christmas? Will we be spending Christmas under lockdown? There's just been so many challenges and trials along the way, hasn't there? It's actually been really exhausting. <clears throat> and yet, in some interesting way, it gives us some insight into that first Christmas. The challenges Mary and Joseph face made their journey challenging, and I'm sure there were times where they were wondering, are we going to make it? We know they did. Jesus the Christ was born. And because Jesus was born beyond any challenge that we face in this world, we now have a promise that means we will make it. And not simply make it in this world, but we have a promise that there is something better waiting for us when our God-given work and time on this world comes to an end. I really want to encourage you to remember that. Hold on to that promise. No matter what this year has been like for you, no matter how messy it's been, in the birth of Jesus, there is a new hope, a new peace, 
a new love and a new joy which is ours in him. The baby whose entrance into this world was messy came to make things right and make a way for us beyond the messy journeys that we were on. We're going to make it to Christmas and celebrate the birth of our Saviour probably in the same ways we always have. Before we do, though, there's something which I'd like to ask you to do. And that is pray. Pray for someone who's had a messy year. We know the, the mess this year has been, and surely we know someone whose year in it they've lost hope. Or they've struggled to be at peace amongst all that's going on. Surely we know someone who is feeling unloved. Someone who, because of this year, is, is coming to Christmas without any sense of joy. On our, on our church journey to Christmas, we've been lighting Advent candles, reminding ourselves of the attributes of God we find in Jesus. We've lit the candles of hope, peace, love, and joy. We will light the Christ candle tomorrow, which signifies Christ's arrival. And you'll note on the tables either side of me, there are four candles that also represent those same attributes of God. Hope, peace, love, and joy. And I ask you, who is someone who needs renewed hope in their life? Who is someone who needs renewed peace in their life? Who is someone who needs renewed love in their life? And who is someone who needs renewed joy in their life? And you should have a, a tea light candle. If you don't, uh, there are some on the tables up the front. I'd like to invite you to pause for a moment or two and then bring your tea light candle up, choosing to light it from one of the candles at the front. Do this as a prayer that whoever it is you bring before God has not experience new hope this Christmas. A new peace this Christmas. A new sense of being loved this Christmas. And a new joy in their lives. And on the off chance you can't think of anyone, bring the tea light candle up and light it anyway. Light it for yourself. Or perhaps light it for people who are in a country who aren't in the privileged position which we find ourselves. Please pause for a moment and come forward, being careful to light your candle as a prayer. I'd like to invite the musicians up to come and play. Thank you.
Love and joy of meeting our Savior. Go in peace. Amen. 